Just want to say uh, hello who, to everybody who was able to join us this morning or this afternoon, depending on your location. Uh, introduce myself. I'm Mike Majorco, the uh, product manager for Brewing Technology with Gusmer Enterprises. And I wanted to welcome you on behalf of my colleague, Justin Jungle, uh, to the series, uh, series number, uh, number five in the series of our Denwell uh, webinars on CIP. Uh, Justin Jungle is one of our uh, technical sales managers and also a well-experienced brewer and an expert in CIP himself. And so I'm going to turn it over to him to kick off our webinar. Thank you, Mike. Um, yep, so as Mike mentioned, my name is Justin Yingle. Uh, been in the uh, brewing industry now for about 25 years. Uh, spent 15 years with Anheuser-Busch and uh, the rest of the time working with a lot of uh, small brewers and, and different brewers. And I've uh, worked with a lot of different CIP systems. So I'm happy to uh, be able to have a chance to talk to you about them today. Um, so our agenda for this, this uh, webinar we're going to do a kind of a brief overview of, of Gusmer, uh, the company and what we do, and then also of our partner Denwell, who uh, supplies the CIP systems. Um, we'll talk a little bit of, give you a little bit of a CIP overview um, and talk about some general tips and tricks to, and then give you a, kind of a rundown of the Denwell CIP systems and, and some of their options. And then we'll have a, a chance to get into some question and answer. Um, so, uh, uh, from our website, um, if you're looking for a Gusmer rep to consult with and talk about a, a CIP uh, system, you can go to our website at www.gusmerenterprises.com and you go to the find a rep tab and then type in where you're at and what industry and uh, it will pull up the proper contact for you. So Gusmer, uh, we, uh, spe we specialize in being a company with service with knowledge. So we have a lot of uh, a lot of really well educated and well, well experienced folks on our technical sales staff and in, in, uh, both winemaking and, and beer making and in distilling. We were founded in 1918. Uh, the company is still family owned in the third generation. And we uh, specialize in fermentation and filtration products for food and beverage and then also for, for pharma. We have uh, 15 direct technical sales representatives from across the country, um, four product, manager, product managers and three application specialists and 16 R&D scientists on our, on our team. And we uh, offer uh, manufactured rese and resale products. So our partner Denwell uh, was founded in 1997. Um, they're a privately owned company and uh, based in the Czech Republic. And uh, the owners and founders are still involved. Uh, they've developed a lot of the engineering technology you've seen through the years in the brewing industry before starting their, starting their own company. Um, they specialize pretty much in anything uh, anything cold block related. So they can do anything from tanks to, to inline gas injection, water deterioration, blending and dosing, and what we're talking about today, CIP skids and, and systems. So kind of an overview of CIP. Um, so CIP stands for clean in place, and it's uh, defined as being the use of an automated cleaning system to perform a closed loop cleaning function on uh, transfer lines or hoses, process tanks, bottle keg and fillers, other process equipment. Um, the typical system is going to have, at, at minimum, a supply pump, a temperature control on the tanks uh, for your cleaning, cleaning uh, uh, media, uh, a control panel or PLC system that's going to automatically advance and give you the proper cleaning uh, uh, techniques, and uh, multiple tanks that can contain cleaning and steril sterilizing agents. And it can be configured to be used with caustic, uh, acid, um, rinse water, hot water for sterilization cycles, and even sanitizers. And um, CIP systems are designed to recover the, the uh, cleaning agents. So as you run, run caustic, uh, it's going to recycle and come back into the tank for, for continual reuse. So it's a, a pretty big advantage over single-use uh, tanks where you're going to buy them once and then put them to the sewer when you're done. And <clears throat> in talking about uh, a proper CIP, um, there are four factors that you need to be able to manage, and that is time, action, temperature, and the chemicals you use. And controlling each of those is going to be a, a very critical in ensuring that you've got a, a proper uh, uh, sanitation each and every time. <clears throat> so time being referring to the contact agents to uh, contact time with the cleaning agents to properly remove the soil. So when you're dealing with caustic, you're probably looking for about a minimum of 30 minutes of a caustic cycle. Um, action being the mechanical force used to break up the uh, material. So uh, 
that being impingement cleaning when you're cleaning a tank. Um, so you get that, that force that's breaking up anything that's adhering to the sidewalls of the tank. And when you're talking about lines, it's about velocity cleaning. So there's a minimum that, that you need to get proper scrubbing of the lines with the caustic media. Um, temperature. <clears throat> so cleaning agents work best when they're, they're at a maintained temperature. Usually caustic, you're around, you want to be around 150 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. And that's necessary to both uh, have their, their most effective use in uh, clearing microbiological contamination, as well as uh, presenting, preventing a thermal shock to the equipment. And that includes temperatures of rinse water and things like that. And then chemicals, um, the proper selection of chemicals and, and sterilization agents for the, the cleaning task that you're after. So the benefits of CIP, <coughs> excuse me. Um, <coughs> I was a little uh, uh, taken aback when I was asked to talk to you guys about this because uh, I know a lot of folks do use single use and, and still manually clean vessels and lines and parts and things. And, and as a brewer, that's just uh, <laughs> something I would struggle to, to even go down that road. Um, to me, this is, CIP is such a fundamental thing. It's, it's right there behind you know, having a brew kettle in your brew house. Uh, um, the reason being is that we just talked about the TACT parameters. Uh, a CIP system will maintain all of those for you and control all of those for you so that you can be assured of a proper cleaning each and every time. And that gives you the benefits of obviously making sure that your product quality is, in, in, is uh, protected, uh, especially from microbiological contamination, and that you have integ uh, product integrity. So when you go from, let's say you're doing a lager and follow it behind with a stout, you're not getting mixing or blending. Um, you also get a, a very significant material savings with the CIP system. Uh, we talked about how the caustic and is reused, and it also is programmed to um, to uh, save on on water use. Um, so <clears throat> you can get some pretty pretty good material cost savings, also energy and water savings uh, because you're controlling the temperature of the caustic instead of heating up for each and every batch. And then the big one in my book, and and why I wouldn't would never consider trying to do uh, something manual or, <clears throat> or single use as safety. So when you're talking about the temperatures and uh, action that you need uh, to get a proper clean, let's say you're hand cleaning, right? So it's not, it's not uh, safe to be in a tank trying to manually scrub with 150 degree caustic. So people usually end up uh, either making a compromise to make it safe or, uh, or, uh, taking the risk. And to me, that's, that's pretty unacceptable. Um, and, and further, um, when you're kind of bootlegging a system to do a single use, um, you've got all kinds of issues with the potential for <clears throat> hose ruptures and leaks that are going to spray hot water and caustic everywhere. <clears throat> and then last but not least are the environmental considerations. So when you have to put a whole, whole tank of caustic to the sewer every time you CIP a line or every time you CIP a tank, um, that has a big impact on whether it's your wastewater system or the city's wastewater system where you're putting that. So that's also something very important to consider. So uh, some application tips before we get into the nuts and bolts of about our the CIP systems that we offer through Denwell. Um, uh, some important rules of thumb to remember: caustic should be always be between two and a half and three percent conductivity. Any less than two and a half. <clears throat> you're not getting the proper scrubbing uh, proceed. You're not getting the proper uh, chemical reaction needed to properly clean the tank. And anything above three and a half uh, isn't going to get you any extra benefit. You're just wasting money and wasting caustic. Um, the minimum velocity for cleaning lines is five feet per second. So when you look at a CIP system, you need to make sure it's designed that it can supply at least that velocity uh, in order to properly clean the lines. And then the minimum pressure for a CIP system will be determined by the cleaning nozzles that you choose uh, for your vessels. They all each have a certain specification of the pressure they need to be supplied in order to uh, uh, properly function. So um, speaking of nozzles, selecting a good tank nozzle is, is super important to get proper impingement cleaning. Um, there are a lot of them out there that aren't very good, uh, especially the ones that are static spray balls, because they're not going to get you... Uh, impingement cleaning on every square inch of that of that vessel. <clears throat> Rotary spray balls or even even better jet nozzles will uh, are much preferred over static ones and, and get you that proper impingement. <clears throat> and the other thing to consider is to install a, a small screen or trap filter that you clean out every once in a while. 
on the CIP return. So any of that solid material or anything that's hanging around that comes back to the CIP system will get filtered out and won't get into your into your nozzles and plug them. Um, and that's one one of the common causes of not getting a good CIP is having the nozzles plugged with gunk or hop residue or whatever might come back. <clears throat> a great CI, a great tip for uh, uh, purchasing and setting up a CIP system is to use a conductivity probe on the return. So most uh, CIP systems utilize a PLC and a timer so that it'll run caustic for 30 seconds and then it estimates the amount of time it takes to return the caustic to the tank and then comes back with water. Um, <clears throat> a CIP a conductivity probe will actually show you that immediate interface so that you don't, one, dilute your, your cleaning agent, your caustic or your acid with, with extra water and then cause you to have to dump the tank more frequently, but it'll also save you a lot on water, uh, on your rinse water because you're not going to run more than you need to properly rinse the tank or the lines. And then last but not least, when you when you run a CIP, one thing you have to be cognizant of are, are the potential for tank implosions. If you've ever done uh, that science experiment where you put a little uh, water in the bottle of a soda can and you heat up the bottom and then you turn it upside down in a in a, uh, a vat of water and you can watch the, the can collapse on itself, <clears throat> your, your fermenters and, and bright beer tanks and everything else can do the exact same thing if you don't uh, take take a few precautions. One is that make sure your process tanks have a proper vent so that that it can pull in air rapidly enough to prevent the implosion. <clears throat> Never follow a hot caustic with a cold water rinse. Room water or te tepid water is fine, but that uh, thermal shock going from, from super hot to super cold will uh, uh, cause your tank to, it'll cause the pressure inside the tank to, to uh, hit a minimum and can cause your tank to, to uh, collapse. And then lastly, never CIP a tank without fully removing the CO2, um, especially with caustic. Caustic and CO2 will react to form calcium carbonate. And that reaction <clears throat> will pull a lot of air into the, into the tank. And it happens so rapidly that uh, uh, even, even well-sized vents can't supply enough air before the structure of the tank will, will start to collapse on itself. And with that, I'll hand it over to Mike, to Mike and he can talk through uh, the different Denwell uh, uh, CIP units and, and their features and options. Thank you, Justin. Um, hi again, everybody. In case you've joined us since the beginning of the webinar, I'll reintroduce myself. I'm Mike Majorco, Customer Enterprises uh, Product Manager for Brewing Technology. Uh, amongst the lines of equipment and supplies that I handle uh, would be Denwell. And that's why I'm going to talk to you today about some of the equipment options we have for CIP that are available by way of our supply partner, Denwell. So the, we basically have three different levels that we can talk about here uh, from, from simple to as elaborate as you could possibly imagine. And that would be the, uh, the, the most basic, the CIP mobile unit, uh, kind of the middle ground with, uh, with a bit more sophistication, uh, which would be the, the CIP compact unit. And then finally, the fully customizable CIP plant uh, that could use however many tanks and different types of chemicals or concentrations to clean whatever you could possibly come up with in your brewery. So we'll start off talking about the CIP mobile unit uh, from Denwell. Uh, these come in, in a small range of sizes uh, from about one inch uh, or DIN 25 up to two inch. And uh, each size is, is set up to, uh, to clean uh, a certain size vessel in the brewery and, and a certain run of either pose or process piping uh, of a certain diameter. And so basically, if this is a, a system that you would be interested in, we would review uh, what the vessel diameters are that you would be cleaning in your brewery and kind of what the maximum runs and diameters of your piping and hosing would be. Um, these are really great for small to mid-sized breweries. Um, you know, given the sizes that they come in from one inch to two inch, that really kind of fits the broad range of small to mid-sized breweries. And uh, these things are also very versatile and compact uh, as it's cart mounted and essentially you plug and play. You can wheel this to anywhere in your brewery, uh, make the necessary hose connections, uh, plug it in, turn it on, get it set up and, and run your CIPs and then move it to another area of the brewery or put it away someplace out of the way when it's not in use. It is completely manually controlled. Um, 
just a switch panel uh, for uh, turning on and off things like the heating or the motors, et cetera. Uh, it is a two tank system, uh, one tank, which is heated and insulated for your caustic and the other tank, which is an ambient tank that could either be used for an acid solution or, or water or whatever other potential uh, CIP or sanitizing uh, item solution you may want to use in there. Um, in addition to the basic configuration, which we've kind of discussed here, there are available options that can be added onto this unit. Uh, there is an inline trim heater, which once you have the solution out of the holding vessel and circulating in the loop, this, this inline electric trim heater can maintain the temperature of that solution. So if you're doing a longer CIP. Uh, an inline strainer, as uh, Justin had just mentioned, it's a good idea to have a strainer somewhere in your CIP loop uh, to help ensure that you catch the bigger chunks of material that could be breaking loose during your CIP and either not plugging them in, you plugging your spray balls uh, with them or unnecessarily reintroducing material to your CIP tank. Uh, you, can, you can insulate uh, the caustic vessel or have it uninsulated. And then the final uh, standard option is that uh, a pressure holding valve can be added into the system in the loop to be able to clean uh, vessels that are under pressure, say for acid cleaning of bright beer tanks, et cetera. Again, it's a convenient mobile cart that can be wheeled anywhere in the brewery, including someplace out of the way if you don't wanna look at it when it's not in use or if you've got a brewery tour coming through, et cetera. And then uh, it is relatively uh, compact dimensions. You can see here, this is the smallest unit, but dimensions from this point from you know, roughly one and a half uh, meters high, uh, two meters wide and, and seven tenths deep. Uh, the next step in the Dunwell uh, CIP system technology would be the CIP compact unit. And these come in a bit of a broader range of sizes and are, are kind of well suited for kind of midsize and, and up breweries. Uh, maybe uh, not the best solution for it for the smallest of breweries. Uh, as you can see, the size range starts an inch and a half or DIN 40 and then goes up to three inch or DIN 80. And as with the mobile uh, units, each size in the range is, is so uh, calculated to be able to clean vessels of uh, up to a certain diameter and uh, piping or hose runs of up to a certain length and uh, diameter. And again, if, if this was a system you were interested in, you would work with your local rep to kind of share those parameters from your brewery with them. And we would be able to narrow down the size of the range that would work for you. Uh, the benefit to this then in sophistication over the more basic mobile manual units is that uh, it has a bit of automation by way of PLC control, uh, where essentially you are able to enter recipes for what you wish to CIP, and whether that be a bright tank or the brew kettle or a fermenter or what have you in your, in your brewery. And then you can just enter that recipe in the, in the PLC. And when it's time to CAP it at unit, once you've made all the necessary connections, just hit start on the program and let it run. Uh, these are three tank systems, which incorp incorporate an insulated caustic tank, an ambient acid tank, and a recovery water tank. All the heating is done uh, in, the in the line loop when the CIP loop is running. Um, and basically, uh, or in the, in the tanks to get started up to make sure that your caustic is hot enough, et cetera. So the tanks themselves are just holding vessels and heating happens in line. Uh, the size of the CIP tanks, the acid caustic and, and recovery water tanks will vary depending upon the size. Of course, the larger the vessel or pipe or hose run that you need to clean, the more volume you need. And so the tanks are sized according to that. Uh, Basically everything that you could want as far as the standard options that were already mentioned uh, in, the, in the more basic manual system is already included as part of this system. Uh, the one thing that you can add here to make your life uh, easier and maybe a little bit safer is inline concentrate dosing. So if you would then also like to have uh, more automated dosing of your CIP chemicals in line, that's an option that's possible. Uh, again, this is mounted on a compact skid. Uh, it's meant to be stationary, but it is also relatively compact. And you can see where the dimensions start here uh, for the smaller size from just under two meters uh, high to uh, 
four and a half wide and one and one half deep. Um, that said, uh, Dunwall is uh, a company that really understands brewery process and breweries and the fact that breweries uh, come in all shapes and sizes and have uh, different amounts of space to spare for, for various and sundry pieces of equipment. So if the standard dimensions uh, don't work for you, don't, don't let that stop you in your tracks. Uh, Denwell is often able to uh, execute custom dimensions you know, within reason for a system to fit a customer's needs. And that brings us to the last and, and most elaborate uh, option from Denwell, and that's the CIP plant. And these are fully customizable and could really probably be done for any size brewery, but really makes sense to uh, be located in, in certainly mid-size and, and up to you know, the world's largest breweries. And as you can see the picture here in the lower corner, this is an example of one of the plant systems. And you can, you can see there, there's many tags. It looks like at least 15 based upon the one that we can see in the system. And you can see the large uh, valve and pump matrix uh, designed to send various and sundry CIP solutions all over this plant. Uh, this would be fully automated for optimal operation. And, and really, if, if one of the simpler systems uh, isn't, isn't right for you, this would pick up where those systems leave off. So if you need something that's a little bit more sophisticated, has more than three tanks, or is able to uh, be in a very large size, this would probably be the best option for you. And of course, as it is fully customizable, Gussmer and Denwell are willing to work with you to determine what your needs are and design a system accordingly. So that brings me about to the end of uh, the system options to discuss here for Denwell from the uh, cleaning and CIP. Uh, so at this point, uh, Justin and I will be happy to try to field any questions that may have come in over the course of the presentation. Yeah, so there's a couple of questions that have come in. Uh, the first one says, is there a upper CO2 ppm limit in a tank that you would that you want to purge to before starting caustic cycles? We are currently evacuating with a vacuum on the fermentation vessel, but we are looking to correlate evacuation times to quote unquote safe readings on our CO2 monitor. So I can take that one. Um, it's <clears throat> really not exactly like a safe level to say, hey, if you're below this this level, that you're okay, because it depends on your tank your tank uh, geometry and the vent. But really, the rule of thumb is get it as empty as you can before you hit it with caustic, because any of that is going to react. And and even if you don't collapse the tank, the secondary factor is that uh, it creates beer stone, which is very very hard to remove. Uh, so. The goal is to try to get it as close to zero as you can. The next question that we have coming in, uh, would you see these CIP systems as applicable in cleaning tanks throughout a winery cellar? Uh, as Justin and I are brewers, we may not be as qualified to answer this question as other colleagues of ours. And so for a real answer, I would recommend that you take advantage of that find a rep screen that we'll also look at again in the presentation and reach out to your local rep uh, to ask this question. But I don't, uh, off the top of my head, it, it doesn't matter what type of chemicals are being included in these systems. And I know that, that wineries have sort of different procedures and different types of chemicals that they would use for cleaning. But I think as long as you have the basic anatomy in your tank that we discussed, as far as having the spray ball and having the appropriate uh, cleaning environment as far as your tank temperature and the lack of CO2, that certainly, you know, either some of the more simple systems or then definitely the custom system could be modified for winery cleaning needs. Justin, would you have anything to add to that off the top of your head? No, I, uh, I fully concur with you. Um, it, you know, at its core, and keep in mind, CIP systems aren't just used for breweries and wineries, they're used all across the food industry, and 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 really, they're uh, they're the HACCP recommendation for anything that's that's food and beverage is covered by the FDA or anything like that. So, so yeah, absolutely, they'd be applicable to wine. It's just you might have to choose your cleaning agents a little bit differently. Um, just remember, it's it's set up to clean a line and clean a tank, and that's all it does. It doesn't really care what's in the tank. Yeah, exactly. So, again, that's something. Reach out to your rep, but certainly, we'd be happy to work with you from 
from your rep on through Dunwell to try to find a solution that would meet your needs for a winery. And it looks like those are all the uh, questions that we have coming in today. Okay, thanks for your support there, Peter. And so uh, just as kind of a recap here, uh, as we end up the webinar, uh, we'd like to remind you all that this was number five in a series of five. And if you would like to go back and view some of the other Denwell webinars that we've done on the various and sundry pieces of technology that our supply partner has to offer uh, to the uh, brewing and beverage industry, uh, please go to our, our website. You can see the URL up here and you can click on uh, these other webinars that we've performed in the past and have a look at them. And then finally, again, uh, if there was a question that we either, able, weren't, uh, either weren't able to answer fully, or if something occurs to you, either while you're maybe watch, uh, later after you've finished this webinar or while you're watching some of the past ones, uh, feel free to go to our website again, uh, www.customerenterprises.com to the finder up section, put in your uh, location and your industry, and you can uh, pose your question by way of your rep. Uh, if they can't answer it right off the top of their head, they will come to us and we will find an answer for you. Thanks everybody for taking some time out of your day to join Justin and myself for this webinar on CIP from Dunwell. We appreciate it. <laughs>